Have there been governments that have lied to their people? Yes, history tells us so. Have there been things called conspiracy theories that were later proven to be true and no longer theories? Yes, history tells us so. And so for that reason, we ought to be open minded when it comes to things that may be labeled as a conspiracy theory. We, we, we may want to consider the reality that window that it may be true. And so that means we we look at things, we can talk about things. There's this freedom we have because we ought to want the truth. And it is this pursuit of truth that is so often the thing that led us to Messiah to begin with, isn't it? And that's beautiful. However, brothers and sisters, today I want to talk about the other side of this coin, because there is something that can happen in our lives where conspiracy theories become dangerous, dependent on how we see them and use them and how and what influence and impact and priority they have on our lives. I want to start this off with a story. Not too long ago, I was listening to an interview with a man who was speaking about the conspiracy theory of flat earth. And what he was saying is that he has been lied to so many times in his life before he He was lied to by his church about certain things, about his faith. He was lied to by the government about other things he later discovered. And and he felt like there was many things that he was lied to about. And he then said that when it came to this idea of that the earth is not round like we all were traditionally taught, but that it is flat. He said it only took him three minutes to completely accept the theory as being the truth, as being the reality. And he said the reason that it only took him three minutes was because he was not surprised because he's already been lied to in his life about so many other things. So, brothers and sisters, What alarmed me about this story, his own testimony was that his belief in something like the shape of the earth was not based on scientific research, the evidence of two or three witnesses as scripture mandates or anything like that. But rather, it was accepted in his case because of a different reason. He has already been lied to. So this must be true as well. In other words, this I this already fits into his ideology that he is lied to about anything that the government ever says. And so everything the government says ultimately must be a lie or everything the educational system teaches must be a lie. So now immediately it's labeled a lie because of that idea. And brothers and sisters, by the way, this is not about whether the earth is flat or round. But the problem is, is that he accepts the reality, the truth, whatever that truth is for him, based simply on his feelings and not based on evidence. And on top of this, for others, they would even accept conspiracy theories simply based on the fact that it is a conspiracy theory, that it is something different, something alternative. See, brothers and sisters, not everything is a lie that the government or whatever institution you don't trust or any. Not everything is a lie. Not every conspiracy theory is true. Are there ones that are? Well, there have been ones that were in the past. So certainly there will be ones that become proven true into the future again. But are all of them true? No. And for some people, the reason that they so easily accept conspiracy theories as truth, even if it's too easily, is simply because there is a sometimes a high, a hype that is associated with it. 
You see, brothers and sisters, I am talking to you today from experience. I am not just speaking from outside here. I myself, in my past, when I was a teenager, I got caught up in various conspiracy theories. That was what was my big hobby, if you will. I loved reading up on it. I loved investigating it. I loved digging deep into these things. But if I was going to be honest with you, it was a problem for me. I would have told you back then, though, that it's it was fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And I was a Christian. I was a believer in God. I would have even told you that I'm doing it as part of my mission for God to expose the lies that the enemy is doing. The only problem was that I was more caught up on the enemy's lies than God's truth. The only problem was that conspiracy theories have become my idol back then. And God had to rip me out of that because I started realizing that I am more consumed in conspiracy theories than his kingdom work. And no, your conspiracy theory is not his kingdom work. And if the reason for us chasing conspiracy theories is after this high, then it is oftentimes because of two reasons. Number one, because it makes us feel exclusive. It makes us feel special because we feel like we have this piece of knowledge that no one else has. And that makes us better than anyone else. It makes us what people call woke. And it's even this term that has been invented by people who often go into conspiracy theories because that term is even rooted in pride. That term is rooted in I know something more. I am woke. As if knowing a conspiracy th- about some conspiracy theory makes you woke. Brothers and sisters, the only thing that makes you woke is the gospel and Yeshua, Jesus, his freedom. That's what makes us woke. And you can't attribute that to anything else. And really, if we're going to be honest, for sometimes the reason that we go into these things over and over from one cessationist idea to the next, to the next, to the next. And that's all that we do. Sometimes we do it because we have a void in our heart that we're trying to fill. Sometimes we do it because we when we're real with ourselves. We are not really doing the gospel. We don't have real, true, deep relationship with God. Sometimes that's the reason. And I want to ask you, I want you to ask yourself the question as you're watching this. Ask yourself, am I spending half the time in my Bible that I'm spending on conspiracy theories? How many people have I baptized this year? How many people have I discipled or led to the Lord? How much am I proclaiming the gospel? You see, if these things are not happening in your life because these are some of the marks of a believer, then you need to step back, step down from your conspiracy theory pursuits and go and pursue his kingdom matters. Number one above all else. You know how Yeshua said, Jesus said, if you don't hate your mother, brother, sister and all these people, you cannot be my disciple. I told you that if you don't hate your conspiracy theories, you cannot be his disciple. And the principle is, is that if in light of him, if it is going to be God versus your conspiracy theories and you don't hate them versus your love for God, just like if it is God versus your family, you ought to hate your family if you had to choose between them and God. That is what the, what Yeshua meant with that. And we have to do the same with our conspiracy theories, because if you are wondering if you're thinking twice about that, you have an idol on your hands. And if your conspiracy theories are getting in the way of the kingdom life in your life, you have an idol on your hands. You have blood on your hands. And if you are only thinking about your conspiracy theories in light of this feast season, we are even in right now, this feast of Passover, you have an idol on your hands. Get rid of it. Brothers and sisters, the danger of it, you may say, well, what's the big deal, PD? What's the big deal? The big deal is sometimes we go and we say this. We go and post something on Facebook or we share something where or here or there. But if it is unproven, if it is in a conspiracy theory and a conspiracy theory by nature is a theory, a theory is something unproven. If we take that and we post it somewhere and you say, this is how it is. Look how horrible this is. Look at what they are doing or whatever it is. 
but it is unproven. There is not two to three credible witnesses. There is not evidence behind what you're saying. There's no sources attached to it. But you are saying that this is the truth that is bearing false witness. That is bearing false witness. That is lying. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to be careful because even if we are saying something about someone and it is bearing false witness about that person, that is equated to murder according to our Messiah. If what you're saying is wrong, if it is a lie, unproven, and I don't care how much it fits into your ideology, your existing ideas about whatever you're talking about. If it is unproven, it is bearing false witness, even if if it is really true. But it is unproven. There is no evidence, even if it turns out to be true later. But you're posting it at that it is true, even if it's unproven. That is bearing false witness. You can only say something is true if there is evidence for it. If, if we could go and lock people up just based off of uh, rumors, can you imagine everyone would be locked in prison? There'd be no evidence. That'd be crazy. But yet we we are supposed to be ambassadors of the truth as lovers of Christ. Yet we get caught up in things that are untrue or unproven to be true. And now am I saying we, we can't share? Am I saying we can't talk about things? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, don't say it's true when you don't know that we can go and we can say, hey, I found this. I heard about this brother, sisters. I don't know if this is true. You know, we I don't know, but this is interesting. So I'm just sharing, you know, maybe someone ha- can find out more about this. Maybe there's more there's evidence we can see. Maybe this is something interesting to just think about. That's fine to do. But you see the difference, brother, sisters. You know what the irony is? is that we can think we're doing the Lord's work by doing these talking about the, and exposing these conspiracy theories and showing them right to the world. But if you're doing it about something that's unproven, if you're saying that it is true while it is unproven, you're doing Satan's work because you're spreading false witness. You need to understand that there are people who make news websites on the Internet and who publish fake news articles just so they can get clicks to them so they can make money from their ads. That's the only reason they have those websites. Those websites are not credible. They're false. But then believers go and post those websites as evidence. No, there is such a thing as a credible source. There's some such a thing as something that you can only use things and and evidence based things. You can't just take a, a thing from any random website. I can make a website. You can make a website and say whatever you want on it. It doesn't make it true. And see, brothers and sisters, this is how credibility is built. Credibility is built over time. If I say something to you guys today and it is completely false, Tomorrow, you're not going to listen. You're not going to want to hear what I have to say because you're going to think the next thing I'm going to say is going to be false, too. And that's how it is. If you're going to say something to someone else on Facebook, if you're going to say something that is unproven, if you're going to say something that is that is not got credibility behind it, if you're going to lie, bear false witness, guess what? The next time you talk about Christ, they're not going to want to listen to you. The next time you talk about whatever else, no one's going to want to listen to you. Credibility is something that is earned over time of saying things that are true. That is why we believe in Messiah. That is why we believe in God and in Jesus, because he has said things that have been proven to be true and over and over. It's part of what why we know he is who he says he was, because if he lied, if he said things that did not come true, if he said things that weren't true, he would be false. He would not be credible. We would not follow him. So why would anyone want to listen to what you have to say about anything if you don't say things that are true and proven to be true? And so as I end this off here, I just want to make an example. Um, a few two weeks ago or so, I saw the um, ship that was sent to New York, right? There was a ship sent a hospital boat sent to New York to help with the coronavirus patients. And I remember seeing people talk about it, saying that this ship, this hospital ship is not going for to help virus patients, but actually to do some agenda, something evil there. They're actually representing something unwell and that it is some big conspiracy. 
I remember saying to them, bro, sisters, we need to be careful. How can we say such a thing? How do we know this is true? You, we say this is true, but how do we know it? Right. And then a week later, I see in the news something incredible. We see this man. I read it in the news. It says engineer intentionally crashes train near hospital ship. Mercy believing in the coronavirus conspiracy. The article reads that he was pushing his train of the day, a cargo bound for Vietnam. When the idea hit him, he could draw the world's attention to the US in his mercy if he derailed the train and then people could see from themselves, quote unquote, according to the affidavit, he could, quote unquote, woke, wake people up, he said. This man believed that he can crash a train near this hospital boat. People don't even he it's even unclear whether he wanted to crash it into the ship. But he, he derailed the train because he believed the conspiracy theory about a ship that the ship is there to do something evil instead of help these patients of the coronavirus. Do we understand what can happen when we start believing things that aren't true? Am I saying it's wrong to talk about things? No. Am I saying it's wrong to spout things as truth if they're unproven? Yes. Because look at what it can do, brothers and sisters, and not even to mention that there's also conspiracy theories that are actually fed into the world by governments to distract and cause misinformation and to cause evil to to happen. For example, we have uh, Russia. This is also in the news. Russia has been accused by the U.S. of spreading conspiracy theories that the coronavirus is a biological weapon created by the CIA. And now the U.K. has set up a unit to fight them. Russia, it seems, is, is spreading misinformation through fake news sites and in other means, conspiracy theories to inspire things in the hearts of people, ideas that are false to sway political powers, to sway um, things, to to do evil. And then we if we love conspiracy theories, if we jump on conspiracy theories simply for the sake of it being a conspiracy theory, we would jump on this evil theory fed to us by wrong intentions by evil governments, for example, and we will latch onto it and we will even spread it without vetting it, without seeing if it's proven, without seeing where is the two to three credible witnesses as scripture mandates. And then we become part of Satan's work, even though we thought we were doing it for God. So brothers and sisters, this video is not a video against conspiracy theories bar none. I, I, I have no problem with talking about things. But what I am against and what we all ought to be against is falsehood. We serve the God of truth. And if we cannot put our foot down for truth, despite our love for alternative media, despite our love for things that are sensationalist, then what is what are we doing? We are supposed to be disciples. We are supposed to have a credibility attached to us so that when we talk about our God, people will listen. So brothers and sisters, yes, I, uh, years ago I was I loved conspiracy theories. And then I realized that that all was a waste of time. Because the things that I was digging into, most of those things were totally false. Most of them are. Most conspiracy theories are false. That's why they're called theories. They're unproven. And today, yes, hey, here and there, we're, we're looking into things. We're praying. And guess what? If you're spending your time with the Father and intimacy with Him and your Bible, He's going to tell you stuff. If you truly have a relationship with Him, you don't need to get your intel from trying to study what the enemy is doing. And that's all. That's it. Am I saying it's wrong? always know. But if that's all you're doing, if that's what you're spending all your time on, yes, it is. My, my father has a voice. He is not a dumb idol. He can tell me what I need to know. He can, he can, I don't have to be clued up on every conspiracy theory in the world to know what deception is. If I'm just clued up on who he is and his voice, I can know every deception by just seeing it. 
So brothers and sisters, let's refocus. We get refocused in this time. We focus on him and in all times we focus on him and we hate all other things that exalts itself up to the knowledge of God that tries to distract or take our time. Then we will find freedom and we will be able to deliver freedom to others. Thank you.